Hey, you look hard, Neil. Yeah. Hey, no matter is it. Eh, eh. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. And today you join myself and Bernardo, and we are on a drive around this beautiful part of Ireland. It's a grey, clags in day, but we're going to go exploring, and we're going to see what presents itself in front of us. I know it's going to be nice, but Bernard, please tell everybody where are we going today. Uh, to be honest, not 100% sure, but um, I have this little loop around home that, yeah, we kind of, from home, we go to Westport, we get ourselves a coffee, a bit of lunch, and then we start kind of going some roads into Connemara, um, and uh, yeah, there's a few nice lakes, nice rivers, some beautiful beaches. Um, the weather should improve, it's a great day at the moment, but actually out to the coast it looks like there's could be some nice skies and some nice clouds and some nice light in the mountains. So we said we went to Westport, which is a beautiful town in the west of Ireland, absolutely beautiful town. Um, beautiful places for coffee, to eat, to drink, you name it, uh, Westport has it. So we're going to go there and uh, Darren's never been. Have you Darren? No. My first time ever in Westport. And he was like, how come we've never been to Westport? I said, you forget that I'm from Cork. He said, oh yeah, Cork is so great, you never need to leave. Well, that is true, but that's not what he meant. It's that it's actually so far away from Cork that it's not exactly a place I can go for no spin. But once I'm up here, I'm delighted now to be able to see it and go there. And you know, I think it's going to be really nice today. We're going to get some, I think, interesting shots, interesting conditions, and I'll take you along on the journey with us. Let's go. Welcome to our first stop here today and where I am is at the base of Croke Patrick. I'll give you a look at it in a moment here. It's an area that a lot of people who are religiously orientated take a pilgrimage and they go to the very top of it in their bare feet of all things. But where it is now is behind me here, a thing called Clue Bay. And then you can see it in the distance here which is Ackill Island. Now those of you that have been with the channel for a while will know that I went to Ackill Island in February of last year with Dodd and it was Baltic cold. It was a stunning place to go but as you can see it's on the other side over here now. Now for me right now this part is not going to be about photography. I don't have my camera even out of the bag. What I do have is my controller for my drone. So the views from here will look absolutely stunning from the air. I'll give you a look here. What I'll do is I'll switch over onto the controller here so I can record the screen of what you're going to see. I'll show it to you as we take the journey up and then I'll turn it around and reveal the whole thing on the other end as well also. All right, so I'm recording here now on the screen. I'll give you a look at what the screen will see. Um, but you can see now, now in front of me as I go up, we're revealing all of these islands that are here. But I'm going to just quickly now turn it round and give you a look here behind. So that's Croke Patrick. That is where uh, people will do the pilgrimage. And if I try and zoom in here to give you a look and just tilt this up, you can see a pathway that's running the whole way, all the way from the left hand side here. And then people come along up to this and then go up to the top here. So it's nice, but for me, what I'm interested in is if I turn you back around again now, is give you a look at this entire area here because you've got a lot of small little islands that are all out here and they reveal themselves as I go higher. So I'm going to send the drone up here and you should see all of these start to reveal. If I take my zoom back out again, you can see some nice textures that are there. But what I want to do is I want to get a shot of all of these islands that are here. So if I look from the left hand side, you can see all these stunning little islands that are out here looking over onto Ackle. And if I spin to the right hand side here, you can see that there is the main land. So I want to be able to go up. So I'm going to go over to the right hand side here. And what I want to do is I want to take a photo from here. So it's not just purely about the video and doing the video so that you can see what I'm seeing and as to how I'm composing the shot. So I'm going to utilize this, which is a bit of a, a jetty coming out, a, a, a land mass, let's just say a sandbank. So that's going to be on the base of my frame. So now if I get that from here, now I go up. And now if I can 
tilt my camera down as well as I go up. You'll see all of these islands start to reveal themselves and I do like the way that the uh, the, the sandbank leads the eye up through the frame and then looking over onto Ackle. Now also as well if you look at the screen you'll see that it's all in red. It's because I've got focus peaking turned on so that I know what's in focus. So this is the shot that I'm going to take. You can see all these islands that are here. So now I'm going to switch over into camera mode, into photo and that will change my perspective, change my settings. So I'm going to tap from here point of view, I'm going to go into my manual and I'm going to take my shutter off auto and I'm going to change that. I'm going to look and looking at my histogram which you see on the left hand side it's going to tell me how much I can play with. So if I'm going here I'm actually getting it as a slower speed so we're going to go to this way which is overexposed and I've got an ND32 as well on that and that ND32 allows me to control so you can see the zebra is appearing that's telling me the area is overexposed so that's now perfectly fine I've got my aperture at f9 and it's telling me I'm almost one stop overexposed so I'm just going to change my aperture here and I'm going to bring that to f10 and I think that's going to be better now and then all I have to do effectively is go in here and I'll back into my camera and then if I go into uh, AEB or burst, so burst will take five shots, AEB which is auto exposure bracketing will take uh, three shots and then I click on this here it'll take three shots, one will be underexposed, one will be exposed correctly and one will be overexposed and that way I'll get all of the details. Now I do like the cloud as well that's there and if I look from where I am now looking down you can see all I've done is gone straight back up so if I look at the cloud that's here I like the texture that's within that but I want to bring that down slightly and then if I just turn here so I'm not losing the edge of the islands and I do the same thing again and take those shots. So yeah that's the shot from here. I'm going to take the drone back down now again. Uh, I think the light actually is interestingly it's kind of fleeting across the scene but yeah I'm going to take this back down again now and then we move on to wherever we end up next. Tell us what you've learned. I just learned that my camera has a setting that I'd never use, but I'm going to use it now, which what? is 1.6 crop that I thought was only for video, but no, it actually can work for photos as well. So we'll see. I'll show, show you a photo I took a moment to go here at 35 mil. I'll stand in exactly the same spot and now I'll take the shot at 1.6 crop. But the view here is stunning. You would have seen it as we came in with the drone footage filmed by Mr. BG. And now, I'm going to go into the middle of the road. What a spot. There's a the shot. Here, Bernard decided to share another tip. So I'm going to pass you over to Bernard now, who is going to take the next part of this video. So I'm using Darren's camera and lens here, so I don't want anybody holding it against me that I've got a cannon in my hand. Um, but uh, just this beautiful spot here, which is in Dulac County, Mayo. It's a gorgeous place and it's quite moody today. And generally it is quite moody. But the odd time you're here, you can get some beautiful light on the mountain, even in the middle of the day. We've had a little bit of light passing through, but nothing really significant. But I said I'd just, while we're here, just show a little bit of what I shoot, especially when you have workshops in here and you do have middle of the day stuff that generally may not be your best photo ever, but it's a great time to teach composition. And this is what I love about here, is these beautiful lines in the, in the rock here, 
which just literally leads you straight into the valley and straight to the mountain, mountain in the back. And I'm just gonna do like a little setup here just to give you an idea. And um, I'm sure Darren will hopefully edit the shots and put them in next. So actually another little tip uh, I would always uh, give people when looking, especially with shots like this. Yeah, it's great to go and just shoot handheld, but something like this, you wanna be very fussy about where you're gonna put your foreground, what angle you're gonna have it as. So I always tell people, get off first, use your hands, you know, without a tripod first, scoping out your composition. When you're happy, then set your tripod down and start pulling the trigger. Um, so we'll give portrait a go first. We're gonna shoot at 16 millimeters. Um, but it's just this rock, it just leads down, but also it's got loads of lines. So let's see how it looks. So I've settled on a, a landscape shot. And as I say, the light's not the best. There's plenty of mood. But what I've just done is I've just filled the whole bottom of the frame. Well, not whole bottom, the bottom third with this rock and it just curves into the bottom of the frame and just leads your eye through. Um, as I say, it's, it's, it's not so much about, not every shot you're gonna take is gonna be your best ever shot, but it's just a great way to teach composition because with a shot like this, it can be easily brought forward to any, any other type of shot. Um, there's light trying to get through here. I don't think it's gonna happen, but still, in a, in a scene like this, I would just do a quick snap, one shot, one, one stop underexposed, and um, it's just a lovely, lovely shot, lovely way to learn composition, and another excuse to get out and about. So, don't you think that Bernard is very good at explaining his way and approach? I still think Bernard should get onto YouTube, actually, Spam the comments below. BG, get on YouTube, and hopefully he'll listen and start creating his own content on YouTube also. Here's the shot next. Isn't this a beautiful area to be able to play around in? Beautiful boats here, Scott Pines as well, trees, and these mountains here. We're at the very end of the Dulac Valley, and this is where we ended up, and I really like it so far. So I'm gonna get set up here, have a more traditional shoot, I think here I'll talk you through some of the shots instead of the running gun side of things, but I think this is gonna be lovely. Now, as you can see here, it is an absolutely stunning scene. You've got these trees that are here, you've got these boats on the right hand side, and we don't have totally flat water. So what I decided to do is put on my polarizer to get rid of some of the sheen on the bottom here, and then also put on my uh, 10 stop, and I'm going for a 30 second exposure. I'm at F10, and I put my ISO as well at 50, because I want to get as long as I can in relation to the exposure. The light is not bright, but still at the same point, I want to expose for the highlights, not have anything blown in the sky. So I want to keep that detail as much as possible in those gorgeous clouds that are up here. I think this is Bernard's first time as well uh, shooting from this end of it. So it's both news to both of us, but I still think it's a gorgeous, gorgeous shot. Here, I'll give you a look at this one now here. What a great spot to find along the road. And then we'll see what else the day brings us. Here's the shot.
Ooh. Well. You up? Ready? For what? You sleep? I've been battling insomnia for the past few months, so I think I've finally found the cure. <laughs> oh, leave me be. Right. You enjoy. Our next location, as you can see, is this single solitary fisherman's hut, which is incredibly picturesque. As Bernard flies the drone directly above me here, uh, hopefully you didn't hear the audio from that, but he's getting some drone footage here, which you'll see in a moment. But what I'm doing here is I'm getting a shot of this stunning, stunning scene. Now, I can't really decide what I want to have achieved here. Um, I don't know if I want to have the house in the middle of the frame, to the left of the frame, or to the right of the frame. I don't know if I want to go 16 mil or I want to go up as far as 35 mil. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a multitude of shots. And that's another bit of advice, but it's for advice from me this time instead of from Bernard, is take as many shots as you think you need, but then take a couple more as well. Because changing your composition in the field is something which is very, very important. And also, when you do nail down your composition, then do some micro adjustments as well. Just just to see what the interplay is between the subject and your background because I often find that moving the camera as little as six inches can make a huge difference to how your composition will work. Now at the moment here as you can see with the sun on me and these nice dark clouds, there's a nice dark cloud as well up here which I'm hopefully able to get into the frame because it's acting as a nice natural framing within the image but the light now hitting this is really really nice. Now settings at the moment here I am shooting at f8 and I'm at 1 500th of a second and that's allowing me to be able to freeze the grasses but the wind is kind of blowing this direction here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on my um, NDs and I'm going to go for a long exposure as well see if I can drag the movement that's in those clothes because I think it might be nice as well now I'm not going to change my composition because if I change my composition then I'll end up with fuzzy grass in the foreground so I think what I'll do here is I'll take another shot just to get that sharp and then I'll do the long exposure and that will then smooth out the water that's in the image but also hopefully a bit of movement as well in the clouds so yeah here's both images and then I'll give you a look at the drone footage as well that Bernard is shooting currently. So that was an excellent day driving around on a loop around. We went from Mayo into Connemara and the conditions that we had were great actually. There was really nice texture in the clouds. We got some fleeting light. A small bit of rain as well. We were having some lunch earlier, but that's fine. And yeah, Bernard has brought me to some pretty, pretty nice places. Bernard, what's your uh, thoughts on the day? You've been here a number of times before, but share your thoughts. Um, I think it's always good to it's good to get out no matter what. Um, were the conditions very inspiring for me? No, but 
it's still nice to get out and just keep the brain ticking over. Um, I've seen this place with all sorts of light and conditions and, and mood and everything you can imagine. Um, but it, in general, it's just nice to just to be out and about but it's different when you're out in your own and the conditions aren't inspiring um, and it's totally different than when you bring someone who hasn't been there before um, so that's the game changer is there and giving Darren you know your thoughts on on the locations or conditions and stuff like that so um, and to be able to help out with little tips um, as well um, which is which is great so yeah I think overall it was uh, quite a successful day and I think any day you can get out on your feet is a good day I fully agree and uh, yeah you know Bernard I think it's interesting actually when we think about the different things that we saw today like they're my first time my eyes seeing them but at the same point you're going there again and you can say okay you can see it through my eyes and it may not necessarily be epic light but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't go there you should always go there there's always going to be a shot granted it may not be a banger shot but it's still a shot nonetheless so yeah thanks everybody for tuning in and for watching remember the key is smash those comments with Bernard for YouTube and make sure you join me next Wednesday for Behind the Raw where I'll pick one image from today's shoot and I'll talk you through my editing process on that. So as always, thank you and if you're first time on the channel, please hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment and until the next time, Schlange Fall!